Estimates are from Toyota in this case that 8.8 .8 billion miles of testing would be required to fully validate an autonomous vehicle. So obviously you can't drive a vehicle or fleet of vehicles 8.8 .8 billion miles. You've got to, in this place, do all the proper virtual, semi-virtual, and then physical validation. I see a huge increase in virtual validation. So as an example, you can be driving a real vehicle, a real truck, a real car, with a simulated environment that the computer is feeding into the vehicle. To simulate the environment where you're driving a real vehicle. So the vehicle thinks it's approaching another car or a truck or a barrier in the road when it's really all just a simulation in the computer. The American Center for Mobility is being set up to accommodate all aspects of autonomous testing. You know, from cityscapes that, that simulate a crowded city environment, to highway environments, to intricate challenges like how do you manage going into a tunnel and out of a tunnel. There's a lot of nuances in the testing of autonomous vehicles that people don't think about. You know, what happens is you come out of a tunnel and hit bright sunlight coming at you in front of you. Those are great challenges and those challenges will be solved through the combination of virtual analysis, semi-virtual, and then the physical testing that's happening at the American Center for Mobility in conjunction with Siemens. From an automaker's perspective, they got to make sure that customers want them and they got to make sure that they want to provide them, that they're safe and reliable to sell. So there's a lot of great work that has to happen in the validation area to make sure that, that autonomous vehicles are safer many feel many times safer than conventional vehicles.